One of Sonny Rollins' most famous albums is titled Saxophone Colossus. Now that's an apt description of a man who is a true living legend. Sonny Rollins was one of the most impactful jazz musicians of the bebop and post-bop eras of the 1940s and 50s. Sonny was born as Walter Theodore Rollins in 1930. He grew up in Harlem, surrounded by jazz and the cultural impact of the Harlem Renaissance, which had a significant impact on Sonny's worldview. When he lamented to an interviewer that he wished he had spent more time playing music as a child rather than stickball in the street, the interviewer pointed out that he would have missed out on seeing the civil rights activism that was taking place on the streets of Harlem at the time. Sonny replied, If you put it that way, it's a pretty hard choice. My grandmother was the one who was an activist in my family. I was a little boy and marching with her down Lenox Avenue in Harlem, having an idea of civil rights. I'm very proud that I was able to get that feeling, to be educated and understand how important that was. Sonny played on a lot of hard bop records. Many of his compositions became jazz standards. In addition to Olio, which is one of the most often played contrafacts on rhythm changes, this 1954 Miles record also introduced Sonny's tunes Erigen and Doxy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Considering how his career started out, Sonny was lucky to have survived at all, let alone live as long as he has. In the first years of his professional career, he, like a lot of others, followed Charlie Parker's example and started using heroin. He recalled, We all knew Charlie Parker was using drugs, and we thought, Wow, I'm going to use drugs if I'll end up playing like that. That got a lot of guys stealing and doing whatever else drugs made you do. I was a despicable character who would do anything to get money for drugs. When people saw me coming down the street, the few friends I still had, they'd cross to get out of my way. Narcotics possession in itself made jazz musicians subject to arrest, and the need for a constant supply, as Sonny suggests, would lead some of them down even more criminal paths to get money. In 1950, Sonny was convicted of armed robbery and spent 10 months on Rikers Island, a notorious New York prison. He didn't break free from his habit until 1955, when he left Miles' new quintet and volunteered for therapy at the Federal Medical Center in Lexington, Kentucky. Originally known as the United States Narcotic Farm, or NARCO, that was the only institution in the U.S. at the time offering treatment for drug addiction. After Sonny kicked his heroin habit in 1955, he worked as a janitor in Chicago while he planned how to get his life and career back together. You might want to think about that the next time you engage with a janitor. He sat in with the Clifford Brown Max Roach Quintet, and he eventually took Harold Land's place in that group. This 1956 record features that band recorded under Sonny's name. It included his tune Pent Up House, as well as this one, Valse Hot. Sonny's solo on this tune is a model of melodic development, with each phrase leading to the next. This was the last record for Clifford Brown and Richie Powell, Bud's brother, as they died in a car crash several months later. Thank you. 
A couple of months after that recording, in May and June of 1956, Sonny recorded two more albums with two different bands. Saxophone Colossus is arguably his most famous album, and it introduced what is definitely his most famous tune, the Calypso-style St. Thomas. On Tenor Madness, Sonny is playing with Miles' rhythm section. Coltrane replaced Sonny with this group, and he appears on this album as a guest on the title track, another Rollins tune that is now a jazz standard, Tenor Madness. To my knowledge, this is the only time that Sonny and Train recorded together. Intriguingly, Sonny later said about their pairing, When I played with Coltrane, I had the impression, and back then it was true, that I was much more popular than him. I wasn't really playing on that record. Coltrane was playing. 
I was only playing halfway because I thought that I was the guy. That was my mindset. It was immature. 